If you want to run ads on Facebook and Instagram and you're just getting started, it's really important to understand some of the basic fundamental things about advertising and how the ads are structured and how things are organized and all the pieces of the ad copy and creative that you need to have planned in advance. And that's what we're going to go over in this video. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Lowell Brown. I'm from Going Social. I run a digital marketing agency in Toronto, Canada, and I work with a lot of small and medium-sized business owners, especially real estate agents, helping them with their digital marketing needs. Now, one of the things that I commonly uh, help my clients with is Facebook and Instagram ads. In some cases, I have clients that are starting from scratch. They know nothing about Facebook and Instagram ads. They maybe have a page set up. Maybe they don't even. And in some cases, I'm taking um, the account management over, whether it's them doing it themselves or having another ad manager provide um, services to them. Sometimes they're looking for a second opinion or just some help. So that's where I can jump in and I manage everything from start to finish for their campaigns. In this video, we're going to quickly go over the fundamental stuff about Facebook and Instagram ads. And I'm going to show you some examples of what the different ads look like, as well as the structure of an ad so that you can get yourself ready and organized in advance before you actually jump in to get started with Facebook and Instagram ads. So let's get into that right now. If you're just getting started with Facebook and Instagram ads, and this is kind of the very first time that you're doing this, there's a few fundamental account setup things that you need to uh, get organized. The first and most basic is that you have to have a personal Facebook account set up. You have to have a personal Facebook profile. There has to be some sort of a accountability uh, towards this. So when you're advertising on Facebook, Facebook wants to know you're a real person and who your account is tied to. So you need to have a personal Facebook profile. Now, the next thing that you need to create is what's called a Facebook business suite account. Now, this is for anything business related. This kind of brings in all those different elements. And we're going to talk about what those elements are. But basically, you need to have a business um, suite account set up. And to do that, you just need to go to business.facebook.com. There'll be a button there. It'll walk you through how to set this up. Once you've got that set up, then you need to bring all the other pieces into play here. Now, to start advertising as a business, you need to have a Facebook business page. So if you don't already have one set up, now is your opportunity to set up a business page. Your advertising will be linked to your business page on Facebook. So whenever someone sees a an ad on the platform, it, it basically will show your page and it associates your ads with your page on the account. So you need to have your Facebook page set up. And then the next thing, and basically within Business Suite, what you're going to do is link all these things together. So you bring in your Facebook page, you link in your Instagram account. And if you don't have one, um, again, you can go to Instagram, create a Instagram account. Now, when you're doing advertising, it needs to also be a business profile. So if you have a personal profile on Instagram, you can either convert that to a business profile and that's done in the settings or create a second account for your business so that you keep business and personal separate. If that's what you want to do, you would just create a separate Instagram account for business. And then again, associate that or bring that in, link it in to Facebook Business Suite. The other thing within Business Suite that you can do is add additional people. So let's say that you have a personal assistant that will do some of the Facebook um, and Instagram posts for you. And you want to let them have access to do posting, which they can do within Business Manager. But let's say you don't want to allow them full control of your page. So you don't want them to be able to, let's say, delete the page or adjust settings on the page or do any of the advertising. Well, Business Manager, um, Business Suite within Facebook gives you the control to add additional people um, associated with your account and give different admin levels. And that, again, is something that you can do within Business Suite. The next thing that you need to do is create an ad account. And again, this is all done within Business Suite. You can create that ad account and that ad account is going to house all the ads. And we're going to talk about the ad structure of campaigns and all that very, very soon. Um, but just know that you have to create the ad account and you can create more than one. So I've dealt with some businesses where uh, they will have 
one, uh, you know, if they if they have more than one business or they want to run um, ads through, let's say, their brokerage versus their own brand, um, you can create multiple ads. There is a limit to how many ad accounts you can set up. Um, but in general, if it's just for you, you only need one and you're good to go there. Once you have your ad account, you can start to create ads. But there is one other thing. If you um, create your ad accounts, they will not run until you put in a payment um, a, a payment process in there. So you need to add your payment information. This can be a PayPal account or credit card. Most of my clients will use a credit card. Um, so once you've got your payment information in there, then Facebook will let you actually run your ads. The last step and what some people often miss is to also create your Facebook pixel, which is now called a data set. Um, that is basically a piece of code that you can add to your website, but it's also used within the ads uh, system to collect data about the people that are interacting with your ads on the platform. So this allows you to basically know who clicks on an ad, if they're a fan, uh, if they're a follow of your page, if they're a follow of your Instagram account, it allows you to track things like what videos they interact with, what different ads they interact with, but also things like going from clicking on your ad to going to your website. And then the data set with additional setup, you can track, you know, someone going to your website, clicking a specific button on your page or how far down the page they scroll, or even if they go to a contact page, complete a, land, uh, um, a contact form and get to a thank you page. So all of that stuff, being able to track kind of the, the process of driving people through a funnel or driving someone from going from an ad to convert to a lead, that's all done with the data set. So it's very important to set that up as well. This is the kind of thing that I will help my clients set up. So if you find any of this stuff difficult, by all means, you can reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you out with that stuff as well, like I do with all my other clients. The next thing that we're going to get into here is talking about the actual campaigns on Facebook and what those look like. So let's get into that right now. So how exactly are campaigns organized on the Facebook platform? Now, when you are going to create your ads, it's important to understand this structure and there is a hierarchy here. So the there's three levels or three pillars that you can consider. The first is called the campaign level. And that's where you're basically choosing, hey, what type of campaign is this? What's the goal of the campaign overall? We're gonna go and show you the different types of ads that you can, can create in the next slide. Um, but just understand here that when you're creating an ad campaign, there are three levels. One, the first is the campaign where you are basically setting up the goal of the campaign. What's the purpose of that campaign? The next thing is the ad set level. Now you can have more than one ad set within a campaign. So the ad set controls things like who you're targeting. Um, and that can be, you know, by interest, by age, by geographic location. You also can set up um, or control where the placement of the ad is. So do you want your ads on Facebook only? Do you want them on Instagram only? Do you want them to only be feed ads, meaning the placement of the ad is in the feed that people see versus other placements like stories or reels or things like that? So that's what's the campaign level. So in some cases, I have clients where we'll create one campaign. Let's say it's a traffic campaign. So the goal of the campaign is to drive traffic to a website. And then we might have two different ad sets, one for Facebook, and one for Instagram. And the reason we do that is because we want to basically control or um, separate the data for our ads and the performance of our ads um, between Facebook and Instagram. Now I've done the same thing where I've got an, a client who's let's say running ads in different geographic areas. We'll create one overall campaign and let's say an ad set for Toronto and another ad set for a different province, maybe BC or something like that. Um, and that way, again, the ads may all be the same and that's the next level down, but we want to be able to do, to organize information or collect the data separately so that we, we can track performance by either the placement or the geographic area or things like that. So that's why you would want to set up more than one ad set. Now within each ad set, 
there are ads and you can have multiple ads in an ad set. So only one campaign within that campaign, you can have one or more ad sets. And then within each ad set, you can have one or more ads. Now you might be asking, well, why do I need more than one ad within a given ad set? The way it works on the platform is basically that you'll set all this up and allow Facebook to show more than one ad to the audience that you're targeting. And the Facebook system, Facebook's al algorithm and the platform will choose the better performing ads to feed out more often. So I will commonly create more than one ad in an ad set with either different visuals, a different headline. And we're going to go over all of this stuff in a second. I'm going to show you all of that, but that's basically why you're creating more than one ad because you want to be able to test this and you're letting the, the algorithm do that testing for you rather than creating hundreds of different campaigns with different ads just to see, Hey, which ad is the best performing ad, uh, which headline works better, which, which, you know, video or which picture works better. All of this can, can happen automatically by structuring your campaigns in this way, where you've got one campaign, one or more ad sets, one or more ads, um, in the ad level. So what I want to show you now is just some examples of the different type of ad campaigns you can create on the platform. So here we have a list of those campaigns. Now at the top here, what you're going to see is awareness. Now this is generally the, the goal of this type of an ad campaign is basically to just get something seen. Let's say you're not interested as much in engagement or driving traffic to a website or getting leads. You basically just want people to see the ad. That's what an awareness ad is all about. Most of the time, this is used by major brands like a Pepsi or a Coke or things like that, where they, you know, can spend tons and tons of money um, on the ad campaigns and they just want people to see it because it's more about branding and awareness. So that's the type of campaign um, that is commonly used there. The next type of ad and a really popular one that's used a lot is a traffic ad campaign. The goal of this ad is to drive traffic away from Facebook to a website. So to a URL or um, another platform as an example. When we're doing ads, let's say for real estate agents, and we want to, um, you know, get someone's attention, but we want to drive them to a landing page or to the real estate website or that specific listing website, traffic is one of the type of ads that we will test. And, and again, I want to stress that part of this is about testing. You have to test a different campaign type to see what works best for your given goal. So in some cases we will test traffic. In some cases we'll test something else. So that's why I'm explaining all of these different um, campaign types. And, and again, my recommendation is always to start with one, but test a couple of them just to see if, you know, you're going to get a better response based on what your overall goal is with a given type of ad. The next type of ad is called an engagement style ad. And on this, you're basically looking for engagement on the actual ad. And that engagement can be something like um, getting likes and comments and uh, shares to your ad campaign. And, and that's basically what you're looking for is on platform engagement. So people staying on the Facebook platform or Instagram platform. And instead of driving traffic to the website, you are more interested in getting some sort of engagement on that post. So if let's say you're doing a opinion post, you're, you're, you know, you're asking a question to the audience, you're not interested in driving traffic as much to the, the, uh, a website for a listing, but you're trying to build up engagement so that you can grow your community and engagement type of ad campaign is what's best. Now, another type of engagement can be actually getting direct messages. So if that's something that you're um, want to test doing to get people to message you on Facebook or direct message you through Instagram and engagement style ad campaign is one to test in that situation. Now, let's say you've got a video ad. Well, that fits under the engagement um, category. So if you're not interested in, let's say, driving people to the website, but you want people to watch the video, that's more of what your goal is. That is an engagement style ad. Another really popular ad type that we use quite a bit is the lead goal and a lead type of campaign. What you're trying to do is again, get a lead for your business. So you're not as interested in just driving traffic. Maybe you do want to drive traffic to your website, but the goal is to capture a lead on your website 
will use the lead type. And sometimes I will test traffic versus lead just to see, hey, which one works better. The reason why these are there is because the algorithm, the Facebook and Instagram algorithm is going to show your ad to people that they know are more likely to take that type of an action. But again, it's something that you might still want to test. So in some cases, I'll do a traffic ad driving to a landing page. My goal is overall to get leads, but I'll also test a lead style ad. Now, while I did mention before that one type of engagement is to get a message, some people will also see that as a lead. So if you're trying to get a, a or convert a lead through direct messaging, again, you can try that lead style ad. Um, there is a gray area here. I, I understand it's a little bit confusing, but it's just about testing. So again, that's why I keep saying you have to test these things. So if your goal is to convert to a customer through a direct communication, a direct message, you can try the lead form ad. The other uh, common way that we work with lead ads is with what's called an instant form. So it's a type of ad on Facebook, and I'll show you an example here where what you're actually doing is the ad can still have a video or an image in it, but instead of driving people to a website where there might be a contact form, this type of an ad actually has the form right there on the ad. So someone clicks on the ad, they'll click on the button for an ad, and then they can complete a form right within the ad. They can submit their name, their phone number, their email address. Some cases, this works better than driving per someone to a website because it's fewer steps. So if someone clicks a button, they go to your website, they have to maybe scroll down your page, they have to find the contact page or the contact form might be buried on the page. It takes a couple extra actions versus someone clicking on your ad, they get the form right there, they complete the form and they're done. So again, this is the kind of thing that I will test just to see the different type of response. Does a lead form ad work better than driving someone to my landing page, which also has additional sales copy that can be used to promote things? That's lead form ads, another very common one. Uh, the next ad type here is an app promotion. So if you're building a an app of some kind, that's where you would use. I don't have too many customers that are doing that, so I rarely use that ad type. But if it's something where you're trying to promote an app, that's the type of ad that I would uh, go with. And the last one is sales. So if you are selling something, if it's like an e-commerce store or something like that, um, you can try a sales type ad. And again, the goal here is Facebook knows who's more likely to see an ad and make a purchase through an ad on the platform. And that's where they're uh, trying to drive people to. So sometimes, again, I would test a traffic ad against the sales ad to see which performs better. Um, but overall, if you are selling something Facebook recommends, use that sale type ad. So those are the different type of ads that you can create when you're creating different ad campaigns. Now I want to show you a couple examples of different ads that we run when we're dealing with real estate agents, just so you can see some examples of how they look. And then I'm going to dissect it and show you the exact important things for each ad that you uh, need to consider when you're ready to start advertising. So let's get into that right now. So here we have a couple different ad types. So the first one that I'm going to show you here is what's called a single image ad. And as you can see um, on this ad, it's got, you know, one picture there. There's still a call to action and there's still a headline on the ad, which is the lower part of the ad. But all the ad contains is one image and that's it. The second one on the right is what's called a carousel ad. And um, this is great. Let's say if you've got a properly property listing and you want to show more than one image from the inside of, or the outside of the home, a carousel ad is, is those type of ads where you can scroll through. So it's got multiple images. You could do multiple videos or a combination of images and videos with a carousel ad. You'll see that below each one, there is a headline um, and each one has an individual call to action. What's interesting with this type of ad as well is that with each image and each call to action button, that can go to a different URL. So let's say you're using this for one property. Hey, great, they're all gonna have the same URL there. Someone clicking on the button will take them all to the same website. But if you wanted to show multiple listings, here what you could do is each image could be a different property and the link, the call to action can go to a separate, um, a separate landing page for each of those individual properties. So I've got some clients where they will test different types of, of uh, uses for a carousel ad uh, style here. 
Now, in this case, we've got um, on the left side here, we've got a video ad. So again, this looks very much like that single image ad type, but the difference is instead of one image, we got a video here. So, um, and, and, and again, you still have that headline, you still have a call to action, you, you still have copy for the ad there. The only difference is it's a video instead of an image. The one on the right looks like a carousel ad, but this is actually a lead ad. I just wanted to show you how it looks. So it's the same structure as a video ad, as a carousel ad, as a, um, a single image ad. The only difference here is that where someone would click that, that call to action button, in this case, it says learn more, they would open up to a, a lead um, on that. If this is the lead form, instant form type ad, where the next slide that someone would see instead of a carousel or an image or a video, it would open up and it would actually show a form that someone can submit their name, their email, their phone number. You can customize these forms as well. So you can ask additional questions if you want. Um, and that's a lead form style ad. So how exactly do the ads look and what are the important pieces? And this is what I uh, really wanted to make sure that you're aware of. So when you're starting to plan your advertisements, these are the most important pieces that you need to have. And the reason why I'm also explaining this is because um, I often have clients and they tell me, hey, we're ready to go. I want to do some advertising. And then I have to work with them to get the you know different things worked out where um, the primary text, the headlines, that kind of thing. So the most important um, thing on the ad here I would say, in my opinion, is the visual, is the media, the image or the video. That's the thing that's going to stop the scroll. It's going to capture someone's attention. So um, if you're doing a property listing, it's really easy. Just get all of those images together and you can choose the best you know, set of images uh, that you want to show or, or test with different ads. And in some cases, I'll use the same primary text. I'll use the same headline, but I'll just switch out to different photos because you never know what's going to capture someone's attention. So images and having those ready is um, very useful. Now, in terms of the number of ads that you should create, I usually recommend clients have three to five ads per ad set. So again, three to five different ad combinations. Um, again, that can mean, you know, the same image and different headlines, um, the same image, same headline, different ad copy. So just think that you want to do some slight changes just to test different things. What's going to capture someone's attention? What's going to uh, get them to act or click on your ad? Okay. So we've gone over uh, the images. Headline is um, a short, it's just the title. It's the title of what, um, you know, what action do you want someone to take or what are you promoting? What's going to capture their attention? So in some cases, I will say home for sale in a given area. In some cases, I will write the address. Um, in some cases, I will do something where it's like a, a FOMO if you're missing out. It's like this just listed or um, uh, uh, open house, you know, on this date, something like that, that's going to stop the scroll, get someone's attention. And again, we'll test different types of headlines to see what kind of hooks people better or what in some cases is branded better for that client. Um, the primary text is where you have the most inf most space for information. And this is the description of what the ad is all about. I, I will test sometimes with very little copy and I will test sometimes with longer copy. This example here, I would say is a medium. It hits kind of fits in the middle here. Uh, one thing you should know though, is usually the first two to three lines that you see here at the top, um, those will usually be the only thing that you see at first. And when there's, this is an expanded view of this ad. So usually it will only show that first two to three lines and then it'll have a um, read more or something like that so that it can open up. And again, that's one of the actions that you want to encourage people to take. But the reason I'm saying this as well is that that first two or three um, lines that you use in your ad copy, you need it to be very catchy so that it does capture someone's attention and it does make them want to read more or, or, um, view more of this ad. And you'll know that we have some calls to action within the ad copy here, and that we're trying to use different creative and different text here to get someone's interest, to get them to either take an action, to call, to, 
um, respond or reply or click on the link or something like that. And that's all stuff that you want to test out in your ad copy. The last part of this is the call to action at the very bottom. And that's usually shown right beside the headline. Facebook gives you a number of these that you can use. You cannot type in your own. They give you some preset ones. There's things like get a quote, contact us, learn more, buy now. Um, there, there are things like that, that are, um, get offer is another one. So there are these pre-canned um, calls to action. Sometimes they do change depending on the campaign type. So going back to that goal, whether it's an engagement ad, a traffic ad, a um, lead ad, some of those call to action options will change. But in general, most of the time I'm using learn more. And that's what I have found to be most effective when, at least when we're dealing with real estate ads, if you're dealing with something like, you know, buying, it might be a get offer or, or order now or shop now kind of thing. But in, in terms of real estate, I'm usually doing either most of the time I'm doing learn more. Sometimes I will do contact us. Um, you can also do, you know, um, I think there's one that's like book an appointment or schedule of uh, an appointment. So if it's an open house, I might do something like that. Uh, but otherwise that's, pretty much what we're going with. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. We basically went over explaining the structure of ad campaigns. So uh, the three layers of the structure, the campaign level, the ad set level, and the ad level. And I showed you some examples of the different types of campaigns that you can run. Again, going over things like traffic, engagement, leads. Um, those are the most popular ones that I tend to use with my clients. But the different types of campaigns that you can set up, I showed you some examples of different ads and how they will look, as well as the breakdown of the important elements of each ad that you should have ready to go prepared in advance and and having all of those things ready having the headlines ready and the ad copy ready and the visuals all ready to go it just makes the process faster when you are ready to create those ads if everything is ready to go you can whip up and create these campaigns really really quickly um you know in some cases it, it'll take me you know half an hour to set up a campaign in some cases it'll take an hour but it just depends on how many campaigns we're setting up and the structure of the campaigns and if the creative is ready. But if you have to, you know, get in and start creating your, your ads and then you realize, oh crap, I need an image and I got to go find those images. Or you're like, oh, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a different headline that we can test. It, the process can be a lot faster if you plan that out in advance. And that's what I will work with my clients to do. And when we're getting ready to set up a new campaign. I organize that stuff all in advance. So I've had time to think about it. I've had time to test some, you know, different headlines and copy options. And then when I want to actually create the campaigns and get everything ready to go, we are all ready. The last thing as well that I, I forgot to mention earlier was, you know, when you're dealing with a traffic campaign, you want to have those URLs for the landing pages that you're driving things to. You want to have all of that ready to go in advance as well. So if you're promoting different listings, make sure you know those URLs and you've got that all organized. And if you are trying to track conversions, you would want to set up those conversions ahead of time as well so that you can track, let's say someone coming from the ad, going to the website and going through to a thank you page and tracking, being able to track the conversion once someone gets to that thank you page URL. That's basic setup um, that you do in advance. But in general, this is the kind of thing that I will work through with my clients to basically have all this stuff organized and have an understanding of what is the campaign goal, what type of ads do we want to create, um, having various versions of the ads so that we can let the algorithm test it. And then the next step after all of this is done and we've run our campaign is we're going to look at the uh, stats and the performance of the ads. And we'll get into that a little bit later in another video. For now, I just wanted to make sure that you have an understanding of how the campaigns are organized um, and we can lead into the next set of videos. Feel free to check those out here. So again, that's it for now. I hope you found this video very informative and helpful. Be sure to check out some other videos that I have on this channel all about creating ads and running ad campaigns on Facebook. If you're looking for things like how to set up the data set, which I talked about here, you can watch those videos. I've got one that you can watch right now. Just click the link up here. So you can also comment below if you're looking for a video on how to set up, let's say a traffic ad or how to set up a lead form ad, comment below, let me know, and I will share that link with you. 
or you can check out the different videos on the channel um, and you can see some of those videos as well. And again, step by step, start to finish, showing you exactly the exact settings I use in terms of targeting, placements, budget, everything like that. Um, and, and I'll show you how to even, I've got videos here explaining even about um, the understanding the stats and the performance of the ad campaigns. So check all that out. Um, again, hope to see you in a future video. My name is Lowell Brown from Going Social. Be sure to like and subscribe below so you don't miss out on any future video here on the channel. And I'll speak to you guys soon.